compatriots who have been wounded or who have lost their life uh, as a result of the ongoing protests. Yes. God help us to heal the wounded and for those who have lost their life in this struggle, may he receive their soul in peace. I'm delighted to welcome all of us to the inauguration of the independent investigative panel set up by the National Human Rights Commission to investigate complaints against defunct SARS and other units of the Nigerian police force following protests by youths of Nigeria to end SARS. This panel could not have come at a more opportune time than now in view of the currency of the issues and incidents in this course. You will recall the events that led to the current state of affairs in our country. Following several years of impunity by officers of the Nigerian Police Force, the Commission in 2006 to 2008 partnered with Network of Police Reforms in Nigeria, NOPRIM, to carry out public hearing on extrajudicial killings and other acts of impunity by the Nigerian police. The reports were captured in the State of Human Rights publications of the Commission in the subsequent years. Again, in 2016 to 2017, following increasing incidents of SARS and police brutality, the National Human Rights Commission, in collaboration with the Clean Foundation, the Nigerian Bar Association, and civil society groups, organized public hearings on SARS and police brutality. The report of the public hearings informed further engagements by the Commission and Clean Foundation with the police authorities. These public hearings on extrajudicial killings and police brutality created a lot of awareness on SARS and coupled with the then mounting campaign of the end SARS movement the then acting president, Professor Yemi Ojibajo, GCON, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, requested the National Human Rights Commission on the 15th of August 2018 to commence comprehensive investigation of complaints on human rights violations. commence comprehensive investigations on complaints of human rights violations by the Commission. Of course, the Commission again met and uh, completed its investigations and submitted the report to the President on the 3rd of June 2019. As a result of that report, the government set up a three-man, a three-person panel to look at this report and advise government on the implementation of the, of the report. We are happy today that the government has accepted the report of the three-man panel, which has led to the ongoing reforms in the Nigerian police. One of the key recommendations of that, that report was the issue of disbandment of SARS, which has already been implemented. Again, as a result of those reforms, the Police Act has been amended and we now have a new Police Act 2020. Also, as a result of the recommendations of that panel, we have submitted the names of all the officers who are supposed to be prosecuted or disciplined as a result of that. We have visited the Attorney General of the Federation and submitted to him the names of all the officers who are supposed to be prosecuted, and they are 33 in number. We also visited the office of the Chairman of the Police Service Commission 
and Inspector General of Police and submitted the list of officers who are supposed to be dismissed, and there are 35 in number. There are other categories of recommendations. Those to be awarded monetary compensation are 57 in number. Those to be given public apology in the national newspapers are 35 in number. Those cases that require further investigation are 26 in number. The cases that we are recommended for obedience to court order are four in number. While some officers were directed to be arrested and prosecuted for auctioning people's property and taking over those properties. The Commission applauds the courage of the Inspector General of Police and the Nigerian Police Force in general to embrace the ongoing reforms and pledges its support in collaboration with stakeholders for the ongoing reforms. The Commission has already convened a stakeholders forum which has five subcommittees to work on all aspects of police reforms to ensure that they can get the police force we want in Nigeria. Key development partners leading support for the reforms include the UNDP, the EU, Makato Foundation, Ford Foundation, Open Society Initiative for West Africa, OSIWA, and Partners West Africa Nigeria, P1. Other development partners are hereby invited to join the process of reforms and support to the new Nigerian police force we want. Today marks another epoch-making day in the event to address parts of the concerns of Nigerians evidenced by demands of the protesters to hold erring stars and police officers accountable for the violation of human rights. The panel comprises the following members. The chairman of the panel, who is my Lord Justice Suleiman Galadima, JSC retired, OF, OFR, CFR. Representative of the civil society, Dr. Lydia Omwa and Dr. Uju Agomo. Representative of the National Human Rights Commission, Mr. Abdurrahman Yakubu. Representative of the Nigerian Youth, Mr. Mubarak Mijinyawa. Representative of the Police Service Commission, Mr. Tijani Mohammed. Representative of the Nigerian Police Force, Mr. Ibrahim Lamode. Representatives of the Nigerian Bar Association, John Ibo Martins and Dr. Garba Tentengi, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. The independent investigative panel shall have a secretariat which shall be charged with the coordination of the work of the panel, and this will be headed by the secretary of the panel, Mr. Hilary Obunna. The independent investigative panel on human rights violation is set up with the following terms of reference. To investigate allegations of human rights violations and abuse of power made against the form SARS and other units of the Nigerian police force. And this is portion to section 6A of the National Human Rights Commission Act 2020 as amended. To B, to make determination as the damages or compensation payable in relation to any violation of human rights where it deems necessary in the circumstances of the case. This is portion to section 6E of the Nature Act 2010. Refer any matter of human rights violation requiring prosecution to the Attorney General of the Federation or of a state as the case may be in accordance with the Nature Act 2010. The panel is also to make recommendations on the measures to be taken in respect of operatives of the defunct SARS or officers of the Nigerian police force, if any, found in violation of human rights of citizens. To propose remedial steps that may enhance the professional conduct of the defunct SARS operatives, any succeeding unit, and other members of the Nigerian police force. And to make any other recommendations that may be considered appropriate. The National Human Rights Commission hereby invites members of the public to submit petitions or memoranda to the investigative panel of allegations of human rights violations by members of the defunct SARS 
and other units of Nigerian police force from the Federal Capital Territory and other parts of the country, especially states which may not have constituted state panels of inquiry to investigate human rights violations against us and other units of the police force. The call for memorandum has been published in three national dailies on the 19th in the Authority newspaper, on the 20th in the Daily Trust newspaper, and today, 21st, in the Vanguard newspapers. The call remains open till 2nd of November 2020. While waiting for memoranda from members of the public, the panel may wish to commence its sittings by the consideration of similar complaints already filed by members of the public with the National Human Rights Commission. It is important to clarify that the National Human Rights Commission is also part of all the state panels of inquiry established to inquire into allegations of human rights violations as directed by the National Economic Council, that panels of investigation should be established in all states and the federal capital territory. The Commission will monitor proceedings in all the panels going on in the various states with a view to standardization of proceedings and harmonizing reports of all the panels at the state and federal levels and submitting reports with recommendations to the federal government for action. The essence of all the panels at the state and federal levels is to give quick access to all Nigerians who have complaints against SARS and the police to air such grievances and also give quick justice in terms of compensation and prosecution of violators of human rights instead of one central panel in Abuja, which will take turns to visit different states. This step is a quick intervention process to ensure that Nigerians are not delayed in getting justice on their complaints on human rights violations, especially considering the ongoing protests. The Commission is currently executing a memorandum of understanding with the Nigerian Bar Association to help get lawyers to assist members of the public to articulate their petitions and to present their complaints before all the panels. However, in the midst of all these efforts to shape the future of the police force, the Nigerians want. The Commission is saddened by the turn of events in the ongoing peaceful protests. Whereas the authorities had shown reasonable restraint in the management of the protests before now, the turn of events in the past few days are condemnable. The Commission is shocked at the use of live bullets against peaceful protesters as happened yesterday in Lagos and some other parts of the country where a state of emergency has been declared. The Commission wishes to reiterate that nothing short of holding accountable the officers who directed and unleashed the use of live ammunition against peaceful protesters will be acceptable. The hoodlums who infiltrated the protest and attacked police officers and destroyed properties of the members of the public should be arrested and tried for their actions. Innocent members of the public who lost their properties due to the action of these hoodlums must be compensated because they were not given protection by law enforcement agents. The Commission has directed its staff nationwide to monitor the protests and submit comprehensive reports to enable it to make appropriate recommendations to the government for accountability and remedy. The Commission calls on members of the public to continue to be peaceful so as to avoid further violations of human rights. Miscreants must be stopped by law enforcement agents from, from infiltrating the protests, and all enforcement agents must exercise caution and full restraint in responding to the peaceful protesters as they will be held accountable for any violations, if not today, surely in the near future. The SARS officers who committed atrocities in the past did not realize this, and that is why they are being held accountable today. As daunting as the task before this panel may be, I urge you to discharge your duties to the government and people of Nigeria without fear or favor, because the journey to nationhood is one in which each and every one of us is at this moment called upon to play his or her part dispassionately. I urge you to join the Commission in playing its role 
in the making of the new peaceful Nigeria we want to have. You, must have been, you have been carefully selected because of your pedigree and commitment to serve Nigeria to the best of your ability with all your might and to defend her unity. I, Executive Secretary of the National Human Rights Commission, hereby inaugurate this independent investigative panel today, the 21st day of October 2020, in line with the terms of reference outlined before. So help us God. Thank you very much. The Secretary has already apologized why we are starting late. I'm told some of you have been here since 9 o'clock. I really appreciate your interest, your concern, your support. This one assignment, which comes once a while in one's lifetime. I learned, no doubt that the assignment is a daunting one. We have done it before, and this time we must gather courage to do more particularly because of the events of the past one week or so. For the remaining weeks ahead, it's not going to be easy for all of you. I, on behalf of the members of my panel, I wish to express our sincere appreciation to the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice of the Federation, Mr. Obakar Malami San, the Executive Secretary of the National Rights Commission, Mr. Tony O. Ojuku Esquire, for the confidence we pose on us to look into the alleged human rights violation by the defunct Special Anti Robbery Squad, SARS and other units of Nigerian police force. From my personal knowledge and official pedigree of my members who are representatives of various interests, institutions, civil societies, youth, Nigerian police force, Nigerian Bar Association, academia, etc., etc., I believe if you give us your cooperation and the cooperation of this commission and it, indeed all Nigerians and particularly all those who have genuine complaints if given required cooperation and support we shall deliver our mandate in accordance with the terms of reference just read out to you by the Executive Secretary. I emphasize and solicit for the cooperation of all stakeholders and assistance of you members of the fourth realm, sorry, the fourth estate of the realm. We also plead with the Greek parties to shift their words sought. I can see a successful outcome of this exercise. It's not beyond the realm of possibility. I want to thank you that as from today we shall be working with you closely. All of you are here today. I know it's not going to be easy, but I crave your indulgence. I'm not responding to the remarks of the Executive Secretary, but I think <clears throat> this is a very good uh, paper for the press. A lot of things that I've been waiting for are here. I want you to read this so that you can get something out of it. We really want as much as possible 
to dance tension. Our ability to be able to work with you will depend on how peaceful the atmosphere is going to be within the next weeks. We have some papers already we can use, we are going to swing into action and start working right away. You will be called from time to time to cover us and cover our proceedings. Meanwhile, I just want to thank you very much. Thank you for, work, for coming. Thank you. is a clear sign that the report of this panel will also be implemented at the end of the report. And uh, the report, you recall, is as this, these panels are also as a result of the decision of the National Economic Council, which is made up of all the governors of all the states in Nigeria, to carry out these investigations in all the states and it's being supported equally in all the states. So it will be implemented. You can be sure of that, that the report of these panels of inquiry, including this one, will also be implemented because the government is committed to the ongoing reforms. Yes, the issue of the governing council of the commission, which had been dissolved in 2015, the commission would be happy if its governing council is reconstituted because that will help in the work of the Commission. There's no argument about that. But as you know, the National Human Rights Commission is a perpetual succession. It is created by statute, and it is there whether there's governing council or not. Under the Enabling Act of NHRC, the functions of the governing council, the functions of the Commission are to be implemented by the Governing Council. The Governing Council under Section 8 of the Act appointed staff to help it in the day-to-day -day investigation of complaints on human rights violations. That mandate to staff to investigate complaints is statutory. Also, the Act also provides for an Executive Secretary who is in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the office, functions of the office. Now, that means that there are day-to-day -day organs to receive complaints from Nigerians and process those complaints. It is inevitable that complaints of Nigerians must be treated, and the Commission has been doing that. I will also recall that the the last panel report, which is being implemented today, was a report compiled by this commission in 2018, 2019, when there was no governing council, and it is being implemented today. So I don't see why there should be any doubt that a panel and recommendation of a commission in 2020 will also be implemented. So it is very clear that if the last report can, can be implemented and is legal, this report also arising from this panel, which is the directive of government, will also be implemented. The time frame for all these panels is six months. That was the directive of the National Economic Council. All these panels are given six months to complete their, their work. Now, the role of the Commission in all these panels is very, very clear. The Commission will set the standard and coordinate all these panels going on in all the states. At the end of the day, it is one central report that will be submitted to the Federal Government of Nigeria, which this Commission will coordinate. So, I want to assure you that everybody, no stone should be left unturned to make sure that this panel is successful. It is timely because 
right now, Nigerians have complaints, and it is very, very important that these complaints are attended to. There's an emergency, and we need to attend to the cries of Nigerians who are appealing for accountability for these human rights violations. And we cannot sit down there as a Human Rights Commission and do nothing because our governing council, which is not our fault, has not been reconstituted. As for the budget for the paddles work, we want to assure you that we are well resourced to carry out this assignment. And uh, we are not going to wait for budget next year. Like the cha like chairman has said, we are starting work. The panel will start work immediately. So the panel cannot be waiting for budget of 2021 if it is starting work today. So I want to assure you that there is budget for the commission's work, and the commission's and the panel's work will not be interrupted because of lack of funds. I want to thank all of us for the interest we have all shown in the affairs of the Commission. And I want to assure you once more, please give us the confidence. Uh, the last report the Commission did has built this country today, has saved the day for this country. Please have confidence in us that this one, again, will be another watershed in managing the crisis, in managing police reforms in Nigeria, and that will help to form the Nigeria we want and that will help to form the Nigerian police we want. Thank you very much. Now, I want to be clear about the clear stand of the government now. We are building out all the reports as far as the concern the project of with the counter reference given to us here. We talk all those reports and actually them one by one and see those which are the project are um, those of them that have been clearly implemented and see those that have not implemented. The role of the commission that has been explained is not of coordinating all the state activities. As of today, I think we have about eight or seven, uh, seven or eight states that have already established the judicial project. And we are saying we divide ourselves into zones. The members of the panel, on day to day basis, we have to report from the states so that we can adequately, you know, and also um, make some progress. Because from the states, if you have the report from the states and know what is happening in other states, we have to go next effectively. Example is very clear here, for example, Lagos State, we are here, faster than. Across the rivers, across the river, on Katena. We will tap their reports from time to time. And that, without saying it, as we said before, if there's any need for prosecution immediately, this is the central authority general of the, of the federation, or the central authority of the state, for immediate prosecution. We don't have to wait until all the reports are gathered together. We call this day to day um, a submission of reports are made. From here, if there's anything from the state, and once it's done immediately, we we'll send it to the Attorney General. Attorney General of the state, the officer, and tell us the report on day to day basis. Those that need immediate implementation will be sent to the Attorney General. Of the presidential including prosecution and compensation. That we can assure you. 